There's been a new ruling today from a federal judge regarding his decision to end a controversial immigration policy. Yeah, this judge has decided to give the Biden administration more time before enacting a block on Title 42, a policy this judge called unlawful. Title 42 had allowed border officials to remove hundreds of thousands of migrants for public health reasons at the beginning of the pandemic. But the Biden administration has relied heavily on it to manage the increase of migrants at the border. In just this past year alone, Customs and Border Protection officials say there have been more than 2.3 million migrant encounters along the U.S. southern border. More than one million of those encounters have led to expulsion. For more on this, let's bring in CBS News immigration reporter Camila Montoya Val Galvez, uh, joining us from our D.C. bureau. Uh, Camila, why did the judge decide to grant the Biden administration's request to suspend the new ruling now for five weeks? Yes, good afternoon, Errol and Lana. Soon after, Judge Emmett Sullivan of the U.S. District Court here in Washington, D.C., ordered an immediate halt to the Title 42 border policy. The Biden administration asked him to suspend that ruling for five weeks. The Department of Homeland Security, Errol and Lana, has argued that it needs more time to make operational adjustments and preparations to gradually terminate Title 42, which, as you know, has allowed U.S. border officials to expel a significant percentage of migrants to Mexico or to their home countries since March of 2020, during the Trump administration, which first invoked this public health law. Once Title 42 ends, Lana and Arrow, everyone who asks for humanitarian protection along the U.S.-Mexico border will need to be interviewed by an asylum officer or will need to be given the chance to see an immigration judge in court around the U.S. So that, that is something that the Biden administration has to prepare for. And Judge Sullivan said that he agreed to grant this request reluctantly because the American Civil Liberties Union, which has challenged Title 42, did not oppose it, and because he wanted to give the administration some time to prepare. Now the government has until December 21st to end Title 42. But make no mistake, this will have major implications on U.S. border policy if this ruling stays in place in December. Camilla, let's rewind just for a moment. Explain to us why the judge ruled to halt the Title 42 border expulsions in the first place. Well, Lana, Judge Emmett Sullivan agreed with the ACLU's argument that Title 42 violates federal administrative law that governs the federal government's regulations, and he found that the CDC did not properly or sufficiently explain the rationale for implementing this, frankly, unprecedented policy to suspend regular immigration and asylum processing, as opposed to implementing less sweeping measures to address COVID-19 concerns along the U.S.-Mexico border, such as a vaccination effort. Sullivan also said that the CDC failed to recognize and consider the harm that migrants expelled from the U.S. under Title 42 could face in places like Mexico. And finally, Judge Sullivan cast doubt on the public benefits of Title 42, saying that the Department of Homeland Security and the CDC did not prove that migrants have a serious risk or are associated with the serious risk of spreading COVID-19 inside the U.S., because, again, that is the public rationale for this policy era in Lana, that it is designed to stop the spread of COVID-19 inside border communities and inside border patrol holding facilities. And Camilla, while, the, le while the, the, the legal structure changes, the leadership structure is also changing. Mm. Um, we've seen the head of Customs and Border Protection resign this past week after resisting um, efforts to push him out. So are we in now for a new round of somewhat chaos at the border? Well, that's a key question, Errol. As you mentioned, Customs and Border Protection Commissioner Chris Magnus, who was confirmed by the Senate late last year, resigned from his position over the weekend. This marks one of the most high-profile departures of the Biden administration and will leave the largest federal law enforcement agency without Senate-confirmed leadership for the time being. This comes after Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas lost confidence in Magnus' ability to lead CBP and asked him to resign. That is according to a senior Department of Homeland Security official who spoke to me. We also know that, according to this official, Magnus did not have a good working relationship with Border Patrol. That is the agency that apprehends and processes migrants along the U.S.-Mexico border. So, again, this will be a significant 
leadership decision as this agency faces an unprecedented wave of migration along the U.S.-Mexico border. And it has other important responsibilities here in the U.S., including preventing the entry of illicit drugs and narcotics. All right. Camilo, a lot to process. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you.